Hey everybody, and welcome once again to Nose in the Book, a Bible reading commentary with me, your host, Pastor Justin Van Reed. Great to have you with me once again as we take a look at four more chapters from the Word of God. We have some really great, powerful uh, passages before us today. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, Psalm 91, Isaiah 36, and Revelation 6. And if there's anything uh, from these chapters that you have any questions about, please feel free to post those in the comments section below. Otherwise, let's take a look at what we have here. First of all, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, Moses rehearses once again what the Lord has done and commands Israel to remember. Remember what the Lord has done. Remember, he says, how the Lord led you in the wilderness for 40 years. Remember how uh, he humbled you. He let you go hungry and then fed you with manna. Remember that every day it would rain down food. And he taught you that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And he says, for these 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out. Your feet didn't blister. Miraculous things happening. And um, and he says, so therefore obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him because God's bringing you into a good land. So the Lord has done good for you, Israel, and the Lord is about to do more good for you. He's given you all these things. He's brought you, protected you for 40 years through the wilderness. Now he's bringing you into the land of promise. And he's going to give you all kinds of stuff. He's going to give you water. He's going to give you wheat and barley, grapevines, fig trees. All this food is going to grow for you. It's a land that is plentiful. And it's got iron as common as stone. And he says, when you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God. Because here's the danger of blessing. All right, remember what the Lord has done, especially when blessed. Because here's the danger. If I have so much, what do I need the Lord for? Right? Moses says, be careful. When you come into the land and you've got all this plenty, you've got all the food and all the water, you've got nice houses and nice vineyards and everything's going well for you. All of your enemies are taken care of. So everything's good. Life is good. He says, when you've become full, and prosperous, and have built fine homes to live in, your flocks and herds have become large, your silver and gold has multiplied along with everything else, be careful. Because at that time, don't forget the Lord your God. Don't forget that He has led you through the wilderness. He fed you with man in the wilderness. And He did all this. So you would never say, I have no need of the Lord. Look, I have all this stuff. I have all this, you know, Silver and gold, I have all of this wealth, and my I got this myself. He says, no, God's done it. God's the one who has given you even the physical health to get the wealth. He's the one who's provided everything for you. And he says, if you forget the Lord and you go and worship these other gods, you will certainly be destroyed. God will not spare you. And, you know, this is really a danger for us. If we have much, and you know, a lot of times we might not evaluate what we have as much, but in the many cases, we have much. We have much. And there's a danger there that we'll trust in the stuff. We'll think that I earned it. I worked hard. We'll think that we're entitled to it. And we'll forget, worst of all, we will forget the Lord. And we will forget to humble ourselves. We will forget that everything we have, even the ability to get things, all comes from him. So that's Deuteronomy chapter 8. All right, Psalm 91 is a psalm of the promise of protection. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. What a beautiful promise, series of promises here in this psalm talks about God's protection, God's rescuing, God's covering, how there's no fear. We don't have to fear anything. Just be in the Lord. Rest in the Lord in His sovereign care and compassion and protection for us. He says, if you make the Lord your refuge, you make the high, most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. He will order His angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Um, 
The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor me. What, what is beautiful series of promises that God gives to his people here in Psalm 91. Rest in the Lord. I trust in the Lord. Take shelter under his protective sovereign hand. He is big and he is capable and he will take care of you. And there's nowhere better to be than just resting in him, relying on him, trusting in, in him, leaning on him. All right, that's Psalm 91. Beautiful Psalm full of many great promises. We then come to Isaiah 36. And this chapter kind of makes me laugh because, I mean, it's not funny that Sennacherib and the Assyrians are attacking Jerusalem, but the speech that uh, Sennacherib's, you know, like chief gives uh, is kind of comical in, in just how similar it is to a, like a political speech today. Right. First of all, he mocks Judah's trust in Egypt. Like, who are you trusting in? You going to rely on Egypt? You, you, you realize that, that 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 they're nothing compared to us. And then he says, in essence, he he misunderstands worship of the Lord. He says, "Listen, don't trust in the Lord. The Lord's mad at Hezekiah. He's not going to help Hezekiah because Hezekiah tore down all of his altars." Now, from the Assyrians' perspective, they don't understand worship of the Lord in Jerusalem alone. So Hezekiah tore down all of the altars of the Lord that weren't really altars of the Lord because you worship the Lord in Jerusalem. So these were fake worship sites. These were uh, idolatrous worship sites that Hezekiah tore down. And so um, and so, God's not mad at Hezekiah for that, but, but here the chief uh, of Sennacherib he says, uh, he points to that. And he goes on to say uh, that the Lord told us to attack. How about that line? Well, you trust in the Lord? Guess what? What do you think? We just came on our own initiative? No. Your God sent us. And uh, and then, the you know, Hezekiah's men don't want the people to hear. So they're like, don't talk in Hebrew. We don't want the people to understand. So Nacrib's man is like, no, I want them to hear because this is what's coming upon them if they don't surrender. Right? This is his goal is that they would simply just give up, right? Don't, you know, try to stay within the fortified walls of Jerusalem and make Assyria have this long, drawn-out battle. Just give up. Just give up. And he calls for denial of Hezekiah. Don't listen to Hezekiah. Uh, he promises good things. How about that? You know, come just come along with us. Look, we'll take you. We'll, 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 we'll go give you good land. Almost like, sounds like God giving the people the promised land. Oh, we'll give you land flowing with milk and honey. Come with us. And then he says, what gods have rescued? Are you going to trust in the Lord? You think the Lord's going to save you? Listen, we've been to city after city, busting through all of our enemies. Their gods didn't save them. What's so different about your God? But of course, they've come to the wrong place. So uh, great chapter here, just introducing. This is uh, different from what we've seen before in Isaiah because it introduces here now in um narrative form and story form here rather than the prof prophecy form we had previous to this um, about about what we've learned is coming from those prophecies that Assyria is coming and so now they come and we read in the following chapters what happens all right Revelation chapter 6 and remember that we have the seals the seven seals no one could open them except the line of the tribe of Judah the lamb who was slain but who lives he comes forward. He can open the seals. And so he begins to break these seals. And seal number one is a, shows a white horse with a rider who is a conquering military king. Seal number two, a red horse who is given the ability to take peace from the earth and, and make war. So increasing war on the earth. Uh, seal three is broken, a black horse. And there's inflation due to scarcity. So that's what's described there. And the cost of things going up eight to ten times what they had previously cost because of you know what is going on with the with the with the fighting, with the warring that's increasing. Seal uh, number four is broken, the pale green horse with death riding on and the grave with him, and they're given the authority to kill one fourth of those on the earth, a quarter, 25% of the earth. 
Seal number five is broken, and we see the martyrs there, those who have died in Christ, with faith in Christ, who call for judgment on the world. God, how long? It sounds like the psalmist. How long, Lord, until you avenge us, Lord? How long until you vindicate us? And we read that they're given white robes, and they're told, basically, a little longer. (laughs) Not yet. Uh, Rest until the full number comes in. And then seal number six is broken, and there's signs in the natural world, right? The the sun, and moon, stars, earthquakes, and the people are terrified. People are terrified of God when they see these signs. And it makes sense when you see all of this happening here. And, you know, Revelation's a fascin- Revelation is a fascinating book, Um because a lot of times, you know, we, we, we think of it just in terms of the end times. But here already, there was supposed to encourage the generation, the readers of it, whether that's that generation or us today, encourage the readers of it. Uh, and so remember that as we go along through these chapters here. This isn't anything that we in Christ have to fear. This is uh, coming judgment on unbelieving world. All right, that's all we have time for today. Again, we had Deuteronomy chapter 8, Psalm 91, Isaiah 36, and Revelation 6. Thanks for being with me these last few minutes. Hope to see you again soon. Until next time, keep your eyes on the Lord and your nose in the book. We'll see you again.